What's happening guys, Mike here from Hammer Fitness. Today I want to give you some crucial, crucial advice on how to get better sleep. Now I don't know about you, but I've definitely been in a place where I've woken up and even after eight hours of sleep, I'm just like, feeling like a zombie and everything. So if you don't want to be like that, please listen closely and even write these tips down. There's heaps more than this and they'll be coming in maybe later on videos, but just for now, the three crucial tips I want to give you to get you a better sleep, all right? So to start off with, it's really about quality over quantity, okay? So if your sleep quality is 100%, that's probably equivalent uh, at 100% at six hours compared to eight hours of, let's say, 60% really crappy sleep. I don't know about you, but I'd rather prefer that six hours because I'm probably going to feel better and I've got more of the day to utilize. Now, I would absolutely love if I could get less sleep, but me, myself, I know I'm an eight hour person and if I don't get that, then I'm definitely going to feel a little bit uh, lethargic and the hours I put in, just like everyone else, I know you guys have a busy lifestyle. So what better way to actually get more out of life by actually changing something to do with your sleep as simple as that all right so i know when you want to hit the sack you really want to get nice and tucked in and just get a solid sleep so you feel a-okay the next day so tip number one is reducing all blue light okay so this could be from your phone computer tv all right so by doing this what blue light is, it pretty much is a light, uh, like a synthetic light that's emitted from devices, computers, TVs, uh, that actually reduces our level of melatonin in our body. Now, melatonin is a sleep hormone that is actually uh, governed by our circadian clock. All right, so our circadian clock is actually governed by, let's say, the whole planet. All right, so as soon as the sun goes up, and melatonin production goes down, vice versa, sun goes down, and melatonin production goes up. Now, to put this into perspective, how do you think birds and all the rest of the animals and the wildlife actually go to sleep or know when to go to sleep, right? It's the circadian clock that is actually governed by the whole world, all right? So they don't have watches, or maybe they do, it's hidden somewhere in the wrist, I don't know. No, but seriously, circadian clock, and we also have one. Just because we've got time and we've pretty much gone against the grain uh, living in a society now where we've actually got lights. Believe it or not, there used to be a time when lights weren't around and there was maybe a pitchfork with some hay on the end to actually see what the hell you're doing. Now we've actually got lights, computers, uh, even iPhones with a bloody torch brighter than some bloody uh, handheld torches you can get these days. All right, so we're going against the grain and we're actually going against the grain of our circadian clock. All right, so back to the blue light. To reduce the blue light, Let's say, let's start off with your phone. To begin with, you need to get yourself a blue light protector screen. All right, so you can actually get these on eBay from anywhere from 10 bucks to 30 bucks. Not actually too sure of the difference. I think maybe uh, the tempered glass. All right, so you can actually get an anti-blue screen, tempered glass, chuck it on your phone. You cannot even tell the difference. The only difference I've noticed is probably when you're in the sun, it may act as a bit glary, but that's about it. Other than that, you really can't notice. All right, and that could be the difference from reducing your melatonin production, which needs to be up right before you go to bed. All right, so I'm a sucker before I go to bed as well. I'm always looking at my phone because I need to either set my alarm or I'm putting on a audio book or I'm doing some guided meditation. I do use my phone. All right, so that blue light is right in my eyeballs. All right, and if that's the case, my melatonin production or my sleep hormone is going down. Okay, that's not good. So, anti-blue screen. Next thing you can get if you're a uh, late laptop lurker, and you're on your computer, uh, I'd advise getting an app called Flux, okay? What this does is it actually knows uh, what zone you're in in the world, and it knows when the sun's going down, it, happen, it just works perfectly. As soon as I can notice the, uh, the sky getting darker, Flux kicks in just about on point, uh, and it actually turns the blue light off, all right? So it goes to a funny tinge, like a, an orangey color, uh, but essentially what you're doing is actually you're letting your melatonin production keep coming up as the sun's going down, as it should. All right, so you're not going against the grain, you're not working against your body's circadian clock. Okay, uh, as for TVs, 
unless you can get a big ass blue screen blocker or you can wear some shades that are actually anti blue screen or blue screen protector just don't watch TV before you go to bed I know this is quite hard for a lot of people I've got so many people clients friends and everything that actually use TV to go to sleep now this is the worst thing you can do all right I know people use it and I used to be a culprit myself uh, back when I was really really young uh, used to go to sleep with the TV on okay so you're essentially getting yourself to a point of exhaustion this isn't good what you're doing here is you're actually going to a point of exhaustion all right, so essentially your body is just tired and you're falling asleep but still that hormone that hormone that's allowing you to get like I said the quality of sleep is down okay so you can essentially fall asleep get an eight hours and feel like crap all right so as you can tell that is a big difference now if you were not to use the TV so what the TV could be doing is actually, you could be addicted to the TV and actually falling asleep that way because it's easier, you're still getting entertainment and still technically you're falling asleep. All right, so it's not as good as the old fashioned way of actually trying to relax, clear your mind, fall asleep. Okay, so that is the good quality way to fall asleep because most likely your production of melatonin is up, your body is recognizing you want to and need to go to sleep, therefore you'll get a better quality of sleep. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, on to tip number two. So, like I said before, we've got a circadian clock. This is our body's clock to pretty much tell our body to wake up and to go to sleep. Okay, this is going to make a massive difference in the way you sleep. All right, so I'm going to talk about two hormones. One I've already talked about, melatonin, and the second hormone is actually called cortisol. Now this is our stress hormone. As bad as it can be sometimes, it actually is essential and we can't almost live without it okay so some stress is good too much is bad obviously but what actually happens when you wake up is we get an increase in cortisol it's almost like the body's natural coffee to wake us up so have you ever woken up and maybe about an hour later you actually feel kind of tired again all right so essentially that's your body's circadian clock trying to kick into gear uh, cortisol levels go up wake you up uh, and depending on the quality of sleep you'll actually feel how good of a sleep you got maybe an hour or two later now if it was good you'll continue the rest of the day with nice amounts of energy uh, but what we want to do here is we want to go with the grain of what your body's trying to do in terms of the balance of hormones all right so cortisol up melatonin down means waking up cortisol down melatonin up means sleeping all right so we just got to get these in the right order from the start of the day to the end of the day now to do this we can use some assistance from good old caffeine all right so caffeine uh, just like a stimulant it's actually going to cause a little bit of stress in the body aka cortisol all right so you can actually use it as soon as you wake up and that's going to help the assistance of cortisol to really boost up this is good at the start of the day. Now you can obviously see how negative this is going to be if you use it at the end of the day where your cortisol levels are going to be going down, your melatonin production is going to uh, be going up. All right, so essentially whichever way they're going, they're going the opposite ways. So let's say you're about to go to bed and you decide to have a coffee because that's I don't know what you've done or uh, you just feel like a coffee. That means cortisol levels going up. Guess what happens to the melatonin like I said? it's going down all right so that means you're going to get a lesser quality of sleep you could be exhausted but say that coffee did nothing because your tolerance to coffee is so high but still cause a little bit of stimulation in your brain which caused cortisol to go up all right so why have the coffee just cut the coffee out all right stick it at the start of the day help your grain or help the circadian clock of your cortisol going up and don't have any stimulants after let's say about four to five i recommend all right not having any stimulants after this all right unless you may be training and you really thrash yourself at the gym to pretty much cause uh, a complete depletion of energy so you actually get a good sleep now this is the second part training training is almost best if you want to really regulate uh, your circadian clock use intense training at the start of the day all right so that's actually going to boost up cortisol believe it or not you actually uh, are stressing the body when you train really really intensely or heavy all right so again cortisol levels up melatonin production goes down so that's kind of adjusting your uh, circadian clock in the right way now you might be a person that trains at night time that's totally fine as well all right i'm just saying that it could be better if you're really trying to get a more quality sleep to maybe put training at the start of the day in terms of strength i've definitely found i have more strength at the end of the day 
Um, and the only way to really get a really good sleep is to maybe just go past, all right? So you wanna train really hard, all right? So yes, it's gonna increase cortisol, but I think over about two hours, your cortisol levels come crashing down again, um, which is obviously a good thing. So maybe not training too late at night, all right? But just close enough and you, would, you trained hard enough uh, to actually just deplete all your energy and just go to the point of exhaustion so your body actually needs sleep and when you get there you hit the sack so that's cortisol anyway now how do we increase the melatonin at the end of the day obviously blue light we've already spoken about so we don't want to decrease that at all but the only way to really amp that up is to have the opposite effects on the hormone cortisol all right so i've already spoken about that all right, so less cortisol at night time, more melatonin production. When our circadian clock should be in the right tune, going with the grain. All right, so when our melatonin production kicks up, you'll start to feel uh, a little bit more tired, your eyelids getting a little bit heavy, so that's a good thing. Don't try to fight it. What actually happens now is you wanna set yourself a, a routine, which is gonna come close to uh, uh, the third tip I'm gonna give you. You want to set yourself a routine to getting to bed. Let's say you get to bed 10 p.m. every single night. I get to bed at 10 p.m. every night. So let's say, for example, your body eventually adjusts and actually knows it's time to go to bed. Okay. So what's going to happen is your melatonin production is going to pick up so that you can go to sleep on time. But let's say you try to push on. Okay. Your melatonin production is going up, 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 up. You want to push past 10 because you've got some work to do. Uh, what's going to actually happen here is your body's going to recognize, okay, wait, we're not actually going to bed. Maybe we need to decrease uh, the melatonin production. You've got to think about the way your, your body works and your brain works. Your brain technically doesn't know what's going on. It's just getting and receiving messages from your conscious mind, right? So whatever you decide to do, your brain is trying to cycle that in almost like a protective mechanism, all right? So our body, going back thousands of millenniums, is all about survival okay so for example your brain's registering okay we're not going to bed maybe there's something wrong let's give him a second or her a second wind of energy all right so have you ever done this you've gone past your normal bedtime or your normal schedule and then you try to get to sleep maybe it's just even an hour later and you're not going to sleep you're just lying there all right this is the reason because your body doesn't know what's going on it actually thinks you had to stay awake for a certain reason your melatonin production was up and was on the right schedule and then you went against the grain you passed that point of uh let's call it no return because your body thought you were going to sleep and now you're like i don't want to go to sleep so your body's like what the hell uh and then you get a second win so that's your body actually trying to help you survive because of whatever scenario you were put in either to do more work or to run from a saber-toothed tiger, who knows? Your brain doesn't know. Your conscious mind does, though. All right, so that's that's the reason. All right, so you always want to get to bed on time. Schedule your sleep. All right, that brings us to tip number three. Like I said before, it's kind of like scheduling. You want to work out a time that you're getting to bed every single night. But one thing to make this even better, faster, and more efficient is to actually have a cue. I've spoken about cues and habits and stuff uh, in previous videos but it's so, so crucial to have a cue. Uh, a cue pretty much means you're going to do something uh, right before you go to bed. So it's almost like a trigger for your brain. Because you did that, your brain now knows it's time to go to sleep or you're about to go to sleep. So what I do every night is I actually meditate right before I'm about to go to bed. So I chuck my headphones on, uh, chuck the guided meditation on, that way my body's got a kind of like a cool down period of 10 minutes where I'm getting guided through meditation uh, and I'm just clearing my head out and just thinking about the meditation, just being present in that moment. And honestly, like it took me a good maybe two to three weeks uh, and it just works a treat. Honestly, as soon as it turns on, I'm out. Quite often enough, uh, I'll actually wake up again having to take the headphones off, which is kind of annoying. Uh, which is where you can maybe just put your phone on the side or away from the bed and just actually listen to it because it actually turns off automatically. Uh, but I also do use a sleep cycle. It's like a, a sleep monitor to assess uh, sleep quality. So yes, I've delved into this quite a bit lately, which is why I'm giving you uh, as much advice as I can on this. Before the video goes on too long though, you gotta find your own cue, whether it be through meditation, whether it be through reading, whether it be even a shower. Something as simple as that. Try not to make it food because when you eat, your cortisol levels go up. But I'll save that for another video. But anyway, 
Just make a cue, all right? Something where your brain recognizes it's time to go to sleep. Try not to let it be in front of a screen either, all right? So something else, all right? Reading, stretching, doing something, all right? Make it a habit, stick to it, and I promise you, you'll get an awesome sleep. All right, I bet you if you're an eight hour person, you can only get six, you'll feel a lot better for it, I promise you. Let me know how you go. Make sure to like our Facebook page and jump across to our YouTube channel, which is getting updated every single week on more tips to help you improve on your weight loss or fitness journey. Love you guys to bits. I'll see you guys in the next video.